Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jacob Fisher and today we're getting into the best index funds out there. Now, of course, there are a couple ways you could go about this. You can go with big name ETFs like SPY with higher expense ratios or you can go with smaller funds with lower expense ratios but have the same stocks in them. Then you can go with the high growth names and again, higher expense ratios, but of course, higher risk with that. Then there's the option of finding funds like QYLD that sell covered calls to give you an extremely high dividend around 11%. All that and more in this video. So let's tap that like button, subscribe, and get into the best ETFs out there. Starting with the first one, we're going with FXAIX. It is better than SPY and VOO because its expense ratio is 0.015% and grows 10% and more per year compared to SPY and VOO where they have a 0.09 and a 0.03 expense ratio while growing the same. They're all tracking the S&P 500. So essentially they're the same thing at slightly different holding percentages and different expense ratios. They all have essentially the same dividend ratio or dividend payout at 1.5%, which isn't too bad. In the grand scheme of things, investing in an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 is probably good for most people. In fact, since 2012, if you had invested $10,000 back then into it and then routinely put only $500 a month, then you'd have a portfolio of almost $150,000 over those nine years. You'd be getting around $2,300 a year in dividends, again, each year at the end of those nine years. Of course, you could also want to continue investing for more than nine years, but this portfolio hasn't been around forever, which is why we can only go back, a little back test for the nine years. Let's get into another index fund from Fidelity that has a 0% expense ratio. That's right, you have to pay nothing to be invested into this. It hasn't been around for a while though, and its average return should be around 11% every year. It's called F0X or F-Z-R-O-X, and it holds companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Tesla, or just another S&P 500, but called Large Blend, which is slightly different. It has a 1.27% dividend yield. I just wanted to offer this one out there before we get into some of the more expensive ETFs that might grow a little bit more than others. Number two is VGT, which is Vanguard's growth technology one. It's better than QQQ because of the 0.10% expense ratio compared to QQQ with a 0.20% expense ratio. I know, a lot. But it does add up at the end of the year, right? It grows an average of 13% a year since its inception because it's tech focused. This has names like Apple and Microsoft, but also names like PayPal and Adobe. Two names I recently added to my portfolio, and I do also have VGT in one of my portfolios because it's a great ETF to include, and sometimes I want a bit of a hands-off approach. Depending on your level of risk, this might be the ETF for you, but keep in mind that you have more drawdowns with a stock or ETF like this, just because the stocks in there have bigger swings, but they also have bigger up, you know, uprises. The top 10 holdings on this ETF make up 57% of the net total asset, which is honestly quite a bit to be putting in just 10 names. If you are considering premiums or discounts, it's currently trading at a 0.09% less than what the net asset value currently is. It has a 0.74% dividend ratio, and that same 10K, which we're gonna use a lot in this video, is that 10K and investing $500 a month. Doing that would leave you with over $670,000 at the end of 15 years. It's not bad. Moving on, we have ICLN, a clean energy ETF with a 0.46% expense ratio. And the average return is only 8.69%. However, most of that average came in the last year because the last year return is 141%. It's been around since 2008 and had quite a dip after that period of time. I don't necessarily know why, there's not too much information on it. But anyway, they're a clean energy ETF with a dividend yield of 0.80%. And I think clean energy is gonna be especially important in the next few years, considering all the things kind of happening down, in, well, we don't, maybe Texas, but also people just wanna get more into clean energy. I know I buy wind power, that's clean. They have part, part of the ETF includes the company, Excel Energy, which is the energy I buy from, so. That's a publicly traded company and it's in that ETF. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's in the ETF, right? People are just gonna wanna be into renewable energies and I think there's good potential for growth in the future. 
They're currently trading at a 0.16% premium and only have 30 holdings, but that's probably because there are not too many clean energy stocks out there yet. I think there will be in the next 10 years or so. Their top 10 holdings are on the screen right now, and I personally own Plug, so that's nice to see. It makes me feel good about my choice. <laughs> Thanks to the most recent year, your 10K and 500 a month investment would be worth $270,000 over the 12 years it's been around. Moving on to four, we have ARK, R-K-K. -K. <laughs> I'm sure we've all heard of ARK Invest and Kathy Wood recently in there, you know, her buying Tesla and whatnot. This is their disruptive innovation ETF with a 0.75% expense ratio. 36% average growth since, since its inception, which, is pretty incredible. If that continues, I that would be wild, right? I've actually uh, added most of their ETFs to my portfolio, which include the innovation one that we're talking about now, autonomous tech, next-gen internet, genomic revolution, fintech revolution, 3D printing. And they also have another one, Israel Innovative Tech. I don't have that one in my portfolio personally, but I do have the others. The innovation ETF is kind of their main one. So let's just get into that one with a 0% dividend yield, unfortunately. Their top holdings are actually some of my top holdings. I'm just gonna pat myself on the back more right there. <laughs> the, the companies they're holding essentially make up those risky and new tech ideas, hoping to disrupt the current sectors. You can look at Tesla or Spot, Spotify, who have recently disrupted the industries they are a part of. They are trading at a 0.02% premium, so not the worst time to get into them. Actually, with the whole market dropping slightly right now, it wouldn't be the worst time to get into more stocks and just keep buying while the market is crashing to get stocks at a little bit of a discount than what you might normally purchase them at. If we look at the growth example, you'd have over $250,000 at the end of five years because they've only been around for five years. Moving on, we have JMOM, one of my favorite ETFs, but it's really one of my favorite ETF because the name, it's just so fun, JMOM, J-M-O-M, right? It's a momentum ETF that returns 15% a year with a 0.15% expense ratio. I've mentioned this one before in you know, a couple of videos, but it's a relatively new ETF that uses a rule-based approach on the Russell 1000 that selects stocks based on stronger risk-adjusted momentum. Essentially, it's just an algorithm that goes around and finds stocks that have decent momentum and gets into them and maybe out of them and profit, hopefully a loss, not a loss, right? Anyways, some of their top holdings are Tesla, Amazon, PayPal and PG or Procter & Gamble. So not actually anything new, but the percent of net assets into those names are much smaller than the other ETFs. There are 265 total holdings, which is quite a bit. That's something M1 Finance is good for. Actually, if you can essentially create an ETF for yourself and it portions out your money into those, your $10 or sorry, your $10,000 would be worth $41,000 at the end of the three years. So not really that bad. Let's just take a moment to step back to see how helpful compounding can be. If you invested over the last 15 years with a $10,000 in the beginning and $500 added to it each and every month for 15 years, you would have saved $100,000, which that's nice. You have $100,000. But if you did the same thing on an ETF like VGT, you'd have $700,000. So really you have one seventh of the value rather than, than investing in that ETF. Even an ETF like SPY would give you a similar return. I wanted to briefly get into those out of the box ETFs that I mentioned in the beginning or the ones that sell covered calls to increase the dividend yield that they pay out to you. There's a few of them out there, but QYLD is the biggest one and the one that has the highest dividend yield. QYLD has a dividend yield of 10.98%. I know that's, that's a lot, right? <laughs> Essentially, they hold the NASDAQ 100 and sell covered calls on those positions to make extra cash, boosting that dividend yield for an expense ratio of 0.60%. It's pretty neat, right? With our growth example, your $10,000 in 2014, which is when they started, would be worth 80,000 today. The return from them is 9% a year. However, you would be earning over $7,000 a year from this ETF alone in dividends. 
that's you know pretty good if you were into some passive income like that you could consider an etf like this but keep in mind that it doesn't actually grow in value very much so it's much more important to put a lot of money into it to get out that dividends if you want to use the dividends for something other than reinvesting them back into qyld let me know your thoughts on these ETFs in the comments below and which ETF you might choose. I upload videos on Monday and Friday on travel and finance stuff. That sounds like something interesting to you. Hit that little subscribe button down there. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time.